I'm endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris because she's ready to step up, bring our party together, go toe to toe with Donald Trump and win in November. I have known Kamala Harris uh, since back right after the 2008 crash when she was Attorney General in California and I was setting up the consumer agency and we fought shoulder to shoulder to push back against the big banks that were cheating America's homeowners. Kamala has been a ferocious warrior on the issue of abortion and under Kamala's leadership, we're gonna get Roe versus Wade back into law of the land. But the part that's fun to think about is when you're up against a convicted felon, who better than a former prosecutor to take it straight to Donald Trump. I'm here for Kamala because Kamala has been here for the American people year after year after year. She's ready to do this job and she's gonna win. So this is obviously just a historic day. Joe Biden's gonna go down as one of the most impactful, effective presidents in our country's history. He let us out of the pandemic, he rebuilt the economy, he, he got past legislation that nobody thought was possible. A bipartisan infrastructure bill, the biggest climate legislation in the nation's history, the gun violence bill that I worked with him on that has reduced crime in this country, violent crime by 20%. It's just an extraordinary legacy. And what he's gonna be remembered for is how he changed the country, but how he put his country first at this moment. He knows that the most important thing right now is beating Donald Trump. And stepping aside, difficult, agonizing, I'm sure, but he's handing the reins off to another extraordinary leader. I know Kamala Harris, she's a friend of mine. She's tough, she's impactful. She has spent her entire career standing up to the big banks, to the polluters, to criminals. She's gonna beat Donald Trump. She's gonna be able to grow enthusiasm for this country and for our party. And she's gonna be a great president. So it's a big day, a day where we can be excited about Kamala Harris, but a day in which we first and foremost just to have to express our gratitude to Joe Biden, a legacy of world-changing service, a legacy of definitional selflessness. Hi, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer here. Today I am fired up to endorse Kamala Harris for President of the United States. And Vice President Harris, Michigan voters have a presidential candidate we can count on to lower our costs, protect our freedoms, and build an economy that works for working people. She's a former prosecutor, a champion for reproductive freedom, and I know she's got Michigan's back. That's in stark contrast to Donald Trump, a convicted felon, soaks violence, overturned Roe, and drove our economy into the ground the last time he was in the White House. Vice President Harris has my full support and I am proud to be co-chair of her campaign. So Michigan, let's get to work. We cannot let Donald Trump anywhere near the White House. Let's go. Kamala. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Oh, hi, you're both together. Oh, it's good to hear you both. I, I, I can't have this phone call without saying to my girl Kamala, I am proud of you. This is going to be historic. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle, Brock, this means so much to me. I am looking forward to doing this with the two of you, Doug and I both, and um, getting out there, being on the road. But most of all, I just want to tell you the, the words you have spoken and the friendship that you have given over all these years mean more than I can express. So thank you both. It means so much. And, um, and we're going to have some fun with this too, aren't we? Everyone, hello. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the third night of the Democratic National Convention. My name is Mindy Kaling. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, I am an incredibly famous Gen Z actress who you might recognize from The Office. Thank you, The Mindy Project. Or as the woman
woman who courageously outed Kamala Harris as Indian in an Instagram cooking video. Yes, you're welcome. I am so proud to be here supporting my friend. But the real reason I am here is that deep down, I truly believe that as a woman of color and as a single mother of three, it is incredibly important that I be appointed ambassador to Italy. That's how this works, right? That's like why I'm here. I've never been, I'm dying to go. And guys, I just really need a break. Um, I know it's not the priority tonight, but just think about it. I am actually here because I have known the Vice President for a long time. And I want to tell you one, a story about one of the first times I ever met her. She wasn't Madam Vice President then. She was my senator. And we were filming a video where she came to my home to cook dosas, a South Indian dish. Yes. It's not every day that a senator comes over, and I was pretty nervous. But when she arrived, we immediately hit it off. We talked about the love we have for our moms, who had both passed away from cancer. Both of our mothers were immigrants from India who came to America and committed their lives to serving others. My mother, Swati, became an OBGYN. Thank you. <laughs> Kamala's mother, Shaimala, became a scientist with a PhD who dedicated her life to trying to find a cure for cancer. And after speaking to Kamala, it was clear to me that Shaimala had passed down the same optimism and fearlessness to her daughter. But the thing I remember the most about the Vice President is that Kamala Harris can cook. Guys, she was so much better than me. But she also knew that my family was watching. So as she gently corrected my sloppy dosa making, she was complimenting me every step of the way, making sure that my daughter Kit heard how good of a cook I am. She had no desire to be seen as better than anyone else. She just wanted my kid to be impressed with her mom. And when she finally and when she finally bit into my dosa, she looked at me and said, mmm, really good, and then never took another bite again. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but it is that warmth, that generosity of spirit, that I know she will bring to the White House as our next president. <laughs> Kamala Harris cares deeply about other people. She will fight to protect our freedoms because those are the values that her mother passed down to her. But in order to protect those freedoms, Democrats also need to win the House. So we have a lot to do, and please welcome to the stage your next Speaker of the House, Hakeem Jeffries. Who says you can't go home again? After watching the Obamas last night, that was some epic fire, wasn't it? Some epic fire. We're now so fired up, we can't wait to leave here and do something. And what we're going to do is elect Kamala Harris as the next president of the United States. I am so honored to have been asked to speak on tonight's theme about what matters most to me, to you, and all of us Americans, freedom. There are people who want you to see our country as a nation of us against them, people who want to scare you, who want to rule you, 
People who'd have you believe that books are dangerous and assault rifles are safe. That there's a right way to worship and a wrong way to love. People who seek first to divide and then to conquer. But here's the thing. When we stand together, it is impossible to conquer us. In the words of an extraordinary American, the late Congressman John Lewis, he said, no matter what ship our ancestors arrived on, we are all in the same boat now. Congressman Lewis knew very well how far this country has come because he was one of the brilliant Americans who helped to get us where we are. But he also knew that the work is not done, the work will never be done because freedom isn't free. America is an ongoing project. It requires commitment. It requires being open to the hard work and the heart work of democracy. And every now and then, it requires standing up to life's bullies. I know this. I've lived in Mississippi, in Tennessee, in Wisconsin, Maryland, Indiana, Florida, Hawaii, Colorado, California, and S California. And sweet home Chicago, Illinois. have actually traveled this country from the redwood forest, love those redwoods, to the Gulf Stream waters. I've seen racism and sexism and income inequality and division. I've not only seen it, at times I've been on the receiving end of it. But more often than not, what I've witnessed and experienced are human beings, both conservative and liberal, who may not agree with each other, but who'd still help you in a heartbeat if you were in trouble. These are the people who make me proud to say that I am an American. They are the best of America. And despite what some would have you think, we are not so different from our neighbors. When a house is on fire, we don't ask about the homeowner's race or religion. We don't wonder who their partner is or how they voted. No. We just try to do the best we can to save them. And if the place happens to belong to a childless cat lady, Well, we try to get that cat out, too. Because we are a country of people who work hard for the money. We wish our brothers and sisters well, and we pray for peace. We know all the old tricks and tropes that are designed to distract us from what actually matters. But we are beyond ridiculous tweets and lies and foolery. These are complicated times, people, and they require adult conversation. And I welcome those conversations because civilized debate is vital to democracy, and it is the best of America. Now, over the last couple of nights, we have all seen brave people walk onto this stage and share their most private pain. Amanda and Josh, Caitlin, Hadley, they told us their stories of rape and incest and near-death experiences from having the state deny them the abortion that their doctor explained 
was medically necessary. And they've told us these things for one reason, and that is to keep what happened to them from happening to anybody else. Because if you do not have autonomy over this, over this, if you cannot control when and how you choose to bring your children into this world and how they are raised and supported, there is no American dream. The women and men who are battling to keep us from going back to a time of desperation and shame and stone cold fear, they are the new freedom fighters. And make no mistake, they are the best of America. I want to talk now about somebody who's not with us tonight. Tessie Prevost Williams was born in New Orleans not long after the Supreme Court ruled that segregated public schools were unconstitutional. That was in 1954, same year I was born. But I didn't have to head to first grade at the all-white Madonna 19 school with a U.S. Marshal by my side like Tessie did. And when I got to school, the building wasn't empty like it was for Tessie. You see, rather than allowing Madonna to be integrated, parents pulled their kids out of the school, leaving only Tessie and two other little black girls, Gail Etienne and Leona Tate, to sit in a classroom with the windows papered over to block snipers from attacking their six-year-old bodies. Tessie passed away six weeks ago. And I tell this story to honor her tonight because she she, like Ruby Bridges and her friends, Leona and Gail, the New Orleans Four, they were called. They broke barriers and they paid dearly for it. But it was the grace and guts and courage of women like Tessie Prevost Williams that paved the way for another young girl who nine years later became part of the second class to integrate the public schools in Berkeley, California. And it seems to me that at school and at home, somebody did a beautiful job of showing this young girl how to challenge the people at the top and empower the people at the bottom. They showed her how to look at the world and see not just what is, but what can be. They instilled in her a passion for justice and freedom and the glorious fighting spirit necessary to pursue that passion. And soon and very soon, Soon and very soon, we're going to be teaching our daughters and sons about how this child of an Indian mother and a Jamaican father, two idealistic, energetic immigrants, immigrants, how this child grew up to become the 47th President of the United States. You know, you know, let me tell you this. This election isn't about us and them. It's about you and me and what we want our futures to look like. There are choices to be made when we cast our ballot. Now, there's a certain candidate that says if we just go to the polls this one time, that we'll never have to do it again. Well, you know what? You're looking at a registered independent 
who's proud to vote again and again and again because I'm an American and that's what Americans do. <laughs> Voting is the best of America. And I have always, since I was eligible to vote, I've always voted my values. And that is what is needed in this election now more than ever. So I'm calling on all you independents and all you undecideds. You know this is true. You know I'm telling you the truth, that values and character matter most of all. In leadership and in life. And more than anything, you know this is true, that decency and respect are on the ballot in 2024. And and just plain common sense. Common sense tells you that Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz can give us decency and respect. They're the ones that give it to us. So, we are Americans. We are Americans. Let us choose loyalty to the Constitution over loyalty to any individual. Because, because that's the best of America. And let us choose optimism over cynicism, because that's the best of America. And let us choose inclusion over retribution. Let us choose common sense over nonsense. Because that's the best of America. And let us choose the sweet promise of tomorrow over the bitter return to yesterday. We won't go back. We won't be set back, pushed back, bullied back, kicked back. We're not going back. choose truth, let us choose honor, and let us choose joy. Because that's the best of America. But more than anything else, let us choose freedom. Why? Because that's the best of America. We're all Americans, and together, Let's all choose Kamala Harris! Thank you, Chicago! Thank you, America! I love you. I just want to say I love you. I love you. Every song that I've sang, every song that I've written, it's because of my love for you right here. But this year, this year I've prayed very hard for peace to come to our world's nations, but also to each one of our hearts. Even though our hearts have been beaten and broken, beyond prayer, I know the importance of action, and now is the time to understand where we are and what it will take to win. Win the broken hearts. Win the disenchanted. Win the angry spirits. Now is the time. This is the moment to remember 
when you tell your children where you were and what you did. As we, as we stand between history's pain and tomorrow's promises, we must choose courage over complacency. It is time to get up and go vote. Listen, the choice is clear, clear than anyone else is saying. Do you hear me? Clear than anyone else is saying. You feel me? We need to choose joy over anger, kindness over recrimination, and peace over war. Every time. We must choose to be above the ugly words, the hateful anger, and the division those words and anger create. We must keep on keeping on until we truly are a united people of these United States. And then, and then we will reach our higher ground. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready to reach your higher ground? Are you ready to reach a higher, higher, higher ground? Tell me. I want to hear you again. Are you ready? Are we ready? Because you know we need Kamala Harris. Yes, we do. And we need a great man as we do have, as a future vice president. You know that. So you know what? I'm depending on you to do, as Spike Lee would say, the right thing. What's up, everybody? Stephen Curry here. I know you all know I played for the Golden State Warriors, but man, what a great honor it was to represent Team USA and go out there and win that gold medal at the Olympics this summer. And that unity on and off the court reminded us all that together we can do all things and continue to inspire the world. That's why I believe that Kamala, as president, could bring that unity back and continue to move our country forward. This is about preserving hope and belief in our country, making sure families can be taken care of during the most precious times. I got to visit Kamala with my team in the White House last year, and I can tell you one thing I knew then and I definitely know now, the Oval Office suits her well. So in the words of Michelle Obama, do something, go vote, be active. Let's show out in November like never before. It's been an honor for me to represent our country. It's an honor to support Kamala. So let's all do our part. God bless. I'm a conservative Republican who had the honor to serve my home state of Arizona in the United States House of Representatives and in the Senate for nearly two decades. I believe that America is a great country. I believe that our best days lie ahead. I want to support a candidate for president who believes the same. I believe that we don't have to agree on every issue or policy, but that we should use the political process created by our founders to debate and to persuade, not disparage or demonize. I want to support a candidate who understands that political opponents are our fellow citizens, the loyal opposition as our parties once knew each other, not the enemy. Having spent the past three years overseas as a United States ambassador, I've seen up close that we have very real enemies abroad. We also have vital and indispensable allies. I want to support a presidential candidate who understands and appreciates the difference. I believe in our constitutional system and in the rule of law. And I want to support a candidate who respects the will of the voters and would never attempt to use the powers of the presidency to overturn an election after having been turned out by the voters. Finally, I want to support a presidential candidate who seeks to unite our country rather than one who divides us. 
one who represents the ideals of a new generation of leadership, based not on grievances of the past, but hope for the future. For all of these reasons, I'll be supporting Kamala Harris for president and Tim Walls for vice president. I served with Kamala in the United States Senate. I've also served with Tim in the United States House of Representatives. I know them. I know firsthand of their fine character and their love of country. I would encourage all Republicans who feel this way to do the same. After all, in times like these, there is nothing more conservative than putting country over party. Hi, I'm Bruce Springsteen. Friends, fans, and the press have asked me who I'm supporting in this most important of elections. And with full knowledge of my opinions no more or less important than those of any of my fellow citizens, here's my answer. I'm supporting Kamala Harris for president and Tim Waltz for vice president and opposing Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Here's why. We are shortly coming upon one of the most consequential elections in our nation's history. Perhaps not since the Civil War has this great country felt as politically, spiritually, and emotionally divided as it does than at this moment. It doesn't have to be this way. The common values, the shared stories that make us a great and united nation are waiting to be rediscovered and retold once again. Now that will take time, hard work, intelligence, faith, and women and men with the national good guiding their hearts. America's the most powerful nation on earth, not just because of her overwhelming military strength or economic power, but because of what she stands for, what she means, what she believes in. Freedom, social justice, equal opportunity, the right to be in love who you want. These are the things that make America great. Donald Trump is the most dangerous candidate for president in my lifetime. His disdain for the sanctity of our Constitution, the sanctity of democracy, the sanctity of the rule of law, and the sanctity of the peaceful transfer of power should disqualify him from the office of president ever again. He doesn't understand the meaning of this country, its history, or what it means to be deeply American. On the other hand, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are committed to a vision of this country that respects and includes everyone, regardless of class, religion, race, your political point of view, or sexual identity. And they want to grow our economy in a way that benefits all, not just a few like me on top. That's the vision of America I've been consistently writing about for 55 years. Now, everybody sees things different, and I respect your choice as a fellow citizen. But like you, I've only got one vote, and it's one of the most precious possessions that I have. That's why, come November 5th, I'll be casting my vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. Thanks for listening.
have been repossessed. So we make no mistake. I know and I remember how hard it is, and I remember the struggle. And I also know, hear me, how expensive it is to be poor. But I also believe in an American dream. And when I was 20 years old, I was looking for inspiration, and I was just showing all the lifetimes of the great space. And there was a man on there that I really admired, and I looked up to. He had a helicopter, and his name was on hotels all over the place. He was always just like, I'm going to get through this, I'm going to get through this. Young man, I didn't admire him because his name was in rap lyrics.
We fight, we win, we fight.